I really need a haircut. My hair is so long and so big. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new around here, hello, welcome. My name is Charlotte. Today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up. How I'm going to be doing this June wrap up is because today is not actually the end of June yet. It is the 28th of June, but I'm going to basically wrap up the books I've read so far. And then at the end of June or uh, 1st of July, I'm going to wrap up the other books I'm currently reading just because otherwise I'd be filming on the 1st of July and then I have a few days to edit this. So I want to give myself enough time to edit this video. So I'll do it in two bits. So I'm going to be in different clothes. As per with a lot of my wrap ups now, I'm just chill. I'm in comfy clothes. I haven't got much makeup on because with wrap ups, I just can't be bothered. You know, with wrap ups, I just want to chill. In this video, I'm going to be talking about seven books. Six of them, obviously by the end of this video, I would have finished. And one of them I am currently reading or have not finished by the end of the month. I know that. With all that rambling done, I'm just going to jump straight in because otherwise this video is going to be super long and once again the lighting is going to be changing but you're used to that now you've got to be so the first book that I read this month was Magnus Chase and the Hammer of Thor which is the second book in the Magnus Chase trilogy I have tried to read this book three times it's the third time I've tried to read this book and it's got honestly nothing to do with the book the book is good I think I ended up giving it a four out of five stars the other two times I just tried to read it I just the timing hasn't been right and I've had things going on and I just had to end up putting it down but I finally was like right I'm gonna read it I'm gonna push through and I'm gonna try it like I think I tried to read it physically once and then on by audiobook the other time but just reading the audiobook just didn't really work but I finally got round to continue reading it and I did it, I finished it and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I really do enjoy this book, obviously I enjoy majority or basically all the Rick Ryden books I have read. I think the only downfall with this, or the, probably the reason why I didn't give it any higher than a 4 star is because this is the third time I've tried to read it. I do remember a lot of it, especially like the first half of it from all the other times I've tried to read it, so the jokes and the funniness to it isn't as funny this time because obviously I already know it. So the humour is a bit, not old, but just I know it so it's not like fresh humour to me but what I do love about this book and probably about a lot of Rick Ryder's books especially the ones that kind of go forward is the diversity we have a Muslim character we have a gender fluid character we have a deaf character and I think there probably is others but my mind is trying to process and I it can't but it's a very diverse book as is a lot of Rick Ryden's books especially the ones more recent I also thought because this is obviously the third time that I'm reading this the plot wasn't anything too crazy it wasn't like oh my god such plot twist because again I kind of knew what the book was going to be about so that probably kind of not hindered it but just obviously didn't make it as like as amazing as it could have been I think in general it was still really good and I had a lot of fun and it's a great just middle grade mythology Norse mythology book I do kind of think it might suffer with second book, book syndrome because a lot of the time I was just like oh is this the only plot is this the only thing that's going to happen so it wasn't anything big it's obviously just building up to the final book overall it was good I enjoyed it I had fun I'm finally glad that I got through it because god knows when I would have got through it if I didn't but I will be picking up the last one to finish off the trilogy at some point I was finally glad that I got round to actually finishing it the next two books I read this month were for the second video in my this versus that vlog series if you haven't checked out this series I will link the playlist down in the description below for you to check out and in this one I took two YA Arthurian retellings or legends or whatever you want to call them basically reading them in both in comparison to each other and in comparison to the BBC Merlin show which if you don't know I absolutely adore basically I said in that video that everything about the Arthurian legend I the thing that I count as canon is Merlin Merlin is canon to me and that's that so I wanted to read these two books to see how they would fare and how I would like them compared to Merlin because Merlin is my life so the first one I read was The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White and I gave this a three out of five stars obviously I don't want to go into depth about it because I feel like I've repeated myself so much this month about these books so Obviously, if you want more in-depth thoughts about these two books that I'm going to be talking about, link in the description, obviously, the video. I think with this one, I felt like it was more... The words, obviously, that I used in the vlog and I'm going to use now because I cannot think of anything other words. It's more, like, historical and more regal and more courtly, the writing style. And I listened to a lot of it on audiobook, so the narrator kind of made it more like that. So that's kind of why it felt like that for me. And I think that sort of writing style, I don't really vibe with a lot of the time. So I think that is what kind of hindered it to me as a book. I also just felt like the plot wasn't like super strong but overall I think the thing that hindered it the most is the comparison to Merlin I just felt like a lot of it was really different to Merlin and obviously that is just me that is just something that I didn't enjoy and that's very picky to me a lot of the relationships and the characters backstories were a lot different to what they were in Merlin so I was just left there being like no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am but I think if you like that sort of kind of courtly 
second or whatever I don't know what century it is like the single figure century sort of stuff and you might like Arthurian retellings I definitely would give this a try one thing that I found or felt kind of thought reading this book that differed to some other people's opinions or what they thought when reading it is that I felt that these characters are read a bit too old for what they're meant to be Guinevere's meant to be 16 and Arthur's meant to be 18 but I just felt like they were meant to be older just the things that they were doing but maybe that's just me it might be completely wrong because some people just felt that they read too young in a sense that they're meant to be 16 18 but they felt that they were younger that is just probably just me and i, I don't know but i just personally felt that they, they read too old but overall i liked it but it just wasn't like amazing and i'm not going to be continuing with the series i think once again it's just my love for merlin just getting in the way and that's all me that's all on me i just haven't gone into plot synopsis it's about any of these books i can't bother to go into for magnus chase because obviously it's a sequel but this one follows our main character guinevere and she's going off to camelot to marry arthur but she might not actually be Guinevere. That's really the only plot I feel like I can give. Anything else I remember about the plot, I feel like would be spoilers. <laughs> and the next book that I read for that video was Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This one I, at first, thought I enjoyed a lot more just because of the writing style. It was a lot more fresh and a lot more kind of, it's a more contemporary writing style and felt more YA. This is also sci-fi, which I actually didn't know going into. So when it started being like, oh, it's sci-fi, I was like, okay then. This follows our main character, Ari, and her and her brother. They're kind of a bit lost at the moment because they've lost their parents they lost boss lost their mums their adoptive brother and sister something happens and then they end up on old earth or our earth which is like a desolate version of our earth she finds a sword she pulls it out of wherever it is and then merlin wakes up this old merlin wakes up and goes oh it's time for me to go and train this new incarnation of arthur to kind of let them fulfill their destiny but this is the first time that arthur has been a woman rather than being a retelling of the arthurian legend it is more of a reincarnation of it because obviously Ari is a reincarnation of Arthur. As I said, this one started off really good and I really enjoyed the writing style and how it was developing in the characters. But as it went on, and I read this in other people's reviews as well, it just felt like it was being thrown around a lot. Everything was happening, but at the same time, nothing was happening. At the same time, I wasn't keeping up and I didn't understand what was going on. Not in the sense that it was too complicated, but it's just the fact that it wasn't really described and just written very well. I kind of just felt myself a bit disconnected and lost and just like, what's happening? Do I care? The best thing about this book is how unapologetically queer it is because we've got honestly every character is queer we've got non-binary characters bisexual slash pan characters i think it's not 100 sure gay characters characters of color it is very diverse because it is obviously set in the future they've remade this universe or this version of the world that sexuality is just it's not anything big it doesn't matter if you're straight bi whatever so that's what i love about this book is just how unapologetically queer it is it was a bit of a letdown just because of the plot just felt a bit messy as it kind of went on and i just kind of slowly stopped liking and caring about it i will also say that because it's a reincarnation of the story i didn't feel like there was a lot of comparison to have between the, this and merlin i found myself in my vlog not really talking about that that much Obviously we do get Merlin telling Ari about his original story and about the original story of Arthur which once again just like the Guinevere deception was different to Merlin or some aspects were different to Merlin so obviously I was a bit like no thanks. Overall it was okay. It was kind of the same as Guinevere deception. I liked it but I will not be continuing with the series just because I just don't think I'll get through it. If you want to read a YA Arthurian retelling reincarnation whatever you want to call it and you want a more kind of contemporary sci-fi one I still give it a shout. I still give it a go even if it is just for the unapologetic queerness. The next book that I read in the month of June was We Need to Talk About Race by Ben Lindsay. Obviously with everything going on this month with Black Lives Matter and once again I'll be still keeping loads and loads of links in the description below for you to check out to help support this movement. I have been trying to push myself to and basically tell myself and make myself as I should have been always reading and engaging with more texts and books etc by black people so this month as i said i read we need to talk about race by ben Lindsay. basically i was just scrolling through my library app to see what i could get obviously around the time because i really wanted to kind of jump straight in i saw the title but i didn't see the subtitle and that's all all on me this obviously i just saw we need to talk about race i was like okay it's cool it's a book about talking about race but what i didn't realize it was mainly focused on racism within the uk church and as somebody who is not <laughs> religious i didn't go and be like i'm gonna hate this I was just like okay it's different but I still decided to read it because I thought it'd be quite interesting and it was it was really really good I gave it a four out of five stars inevitably what I think I enjoyed about this book was that despite it being so focused on the UK church and Ben Lindsay talking about how white dominant churches can do stuff to help with racism and kind of talk about racism it still applied to just general life and not just the church it talked about reparation and how white people within white dominant churches can't just go 
oh yes racism we know it exists they have to kind of sit down and actually go we know what the church has done and contributed to racism in the past we acknowledge that and we're learning from that and here we are trying to repair that and I think that was something obviously you can take into general life and general discussions about racism is that white people need to go we see you we understand you and we are here for you but that's not just it we're not just here to sit down and go yes racism it exists end of story we're here to go racism it exists we are so sorry but we are learning and here we are helping to repair and obviously not saying it in the sense of it's all about us trying to learn it oh look at us look at us white people we're learning oh look at how good we are it's not about that and it's not about us kind of it is kind of us repenting for what our ancestors did i'm trying to say it in a way that doesn't make it sound like white people i'm trying to say it in the sense that of kind of how the book was talking about it what this book was trying to do is putting the pressure in a nice-ish way onto white people to realize what has happened even if they think they've realized what they happened but actually realize what that has happened to not just sit around twiddling their thumbs going yes racism it's the thing as we've all been trying to do and to tell white people and tell myself and all that to actually go do something yes it's all good going racism oh so bad but you need to do something. You need to go out into your life and actually do something about it. Instead of being like, oh my God, I'm so sorry for what my white dead ancestor did, it's so bad. Don't just sit there and do that because that's not gonna do jack squat. Go out and show that you care. I feel like I've ranted a lot so far. Obviously it wasn't just what this book was about. It did go into Ben Lindsay's kind of history with him being a black leader within um, a church and in the UK. And obviously his past of just being a black person and some of the racism he's faced. And also just in general, the racism that, and the not very obvious racism that black people do fo face in the church. But I really did enjoy it. A great book. Go and check it out if you can. And the next book that I read in the month of June was Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. Once again, I feel like I'm trying to push myself to finish and to continue on with series that I haven't continued on with that I've started and just haven't. This is the second book in the Renegades trilogy. I think that's what it's called. I read Renegades back in August, I think. So obviously I, I I'd be meaning to I say back in August as if August isn't nearly a year ago I think my mind's still making me think that it's like January but I read Renegades nearly a year ago so I knew I had to continue all this series because I'd been meaning to for a while and I really enjoyed it and I think I eventually gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars at first thought this book was going to be better than Renegades but I think it's kind of the same to me I know some people do enjoy this one more but for me I felt like it was the same I really did enjoy this book it was so much fun I really do enjoy this trilogy if you don't know what this trilogy is about it's about this world where you've got these two groups called the Renegades and the Anarchists. The Renegades are kind of like your average superheroes who are out there saving people, helping people, and your Anarchists are kind of like the villain group, but it's that message of are they really villains? But what they really are trying to say and do is that they are against the Renegades, but in the sense of they feel like the Renegades aren't doing enough. And our main character, Nova, has kind of felt like she's been betrayed by the Renegades because she saw her family get killed in front of her, and she felt like the Renegades just weren't there when or didn't try to save her family. So she's like bad renegades. She kind of infiltrates the renegades to kind of go against them basically. I did super super enjoy this book. I love the characters and I love their development and even though I felt like not a lot happened in this book it was still pretty fast paced, pretty kind of like it's a good pace to go along and it felt like it went along quite quickly and even though not a lot happened it was still good because I feel like we got a lot more development from the characters and their relationships and obviously it is building up to what's going to happen in the third book. In a sense it does suffer from that second book syndrome because not a lot is happening and it's just building up to the third book but it was done very well with the writing and with the character development so i don't think i have too much to say about this because i feel like i could go into spoilers but i'm not going to but there's some great scenes great moments moments where i was like what overall i really did enjoy it and i'm very excited to continue on or finish this series hopefully soon i don't hold me accountable to it too soon because there are other books I need to read. So that is it for this little section. Obviously I'm not going to wrap up this video yet because I have got two more books to talk about but that'll be obviously later on when I've read more of those books in the month and finish one of them. I'm used to going, oh so I've done the video, let's wrap this up. But I literally just have to be like, this section's done. I'll see you in two seconds. So yeah, this reception's done. I'll see you in two seconds. So hello, I am back. We're back for the second part of this wrap up. Now that it is the end of June, or the end of June has come and gone, and it is now the 1st of July. It is July, what is happening? We're over halfway or we're halfway through the year now. That is mad. This year feels like it's been going on for ages. I will give you a few stats, seeing as I now have them. So my total page count was 2,141. My daily page average was 71 pages. I gave two books, three stars, and four books, four stars. I had zero DNFs. I've got my format ratio written down here and that's because I read some books on both 
physical and audiobook. I've kind of put them down for both. So technically it says that I've read five physical books, five audiobooks and one ebook, but technically I've only read six full books this month. I will now move on to be talking about the final book that I finished up yesterday on the end of last day of June and the book that I'm kind of currently in the middle of that I kind of started at the end of June. So the final book that I read this month that I finished yesterday was The Tattoo of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. I have been meaning to read this book for a very, very long time. I think my mum picked it up or bought it and then she has read it and has been getting me to try and read it, but I've just have put it off or just haven't got around to it yet, but I finally got around to it because I needed like a smaller book just to get through to read to, for the end of the month. I really really did enjoy this book. I gave it inevitably a 4 out of 5 stars or a 4 stars on Goodreads. I would have loved to give it a 5 star and I feel bad for not giving it 5 stars because of the subject matter. I feel like I feel I'm being wrong and for not giving it 5 stars. What made me give it less was while I was near the beginning of reading it, so not that far through it, I was looking into it and reading to it and hearing that some criticisms have come up at the book about it not being 100% true and not some of the facts being not true, even though it is based on a true story. Even though it didn't completely hinder the book or it shouldn't have completely hindered the book, I think I was sometimes being bit skeptical but I did enjoy it. It was still an amazing amazing book. If you don't know what this book is about, it's based on the true story of Lale Sokolov butchering last names I think that's a Russian last name because he ended up taking a Russian last name when he got out of Auschwitz. In 1942 he arrived in Auschwitz-Birkenau. He became the tattoo of Auschwitz. Tattoo Vera. I, I don't know I don't speak German or I trying to speak German, I'm learning at the moment actually. I forgot how you pronounce the word that they actually but basically the tattooist, the person who when all the new people came into the camp he would tattoo them their numbers on their arm. It's this whole story about you know him coming to Auschwitz but I really did enjoy this book because it is a very fast paced very addictive writing style. It is obviously very harrowing and obviously trigger warning for the holocaust. It was really good and I don't really feel like I have too much to say about it because with these books when it is a lot of it obviously it's based on a true story I feel like I can't give too much of an opinion because I obviously don't want to look down or counteract someone's story because this is a very important and very moving and very harrowing and or sometimes an inspiring story. I do have other books I need to read that are obviously centering around Auschwitz because my mum despised them all. But I really did enjoy this book. A very dark, emotional, sad book. But then it's also very important, so I highly recommend it. And the final book that I'm currently reading that I kind of started at the end of June, so I thought I'd still talk about it. And I'm listening to it on audiobook, and that is why I'm no longer talking to white people about race by Rennie Edda Lodge. Everybody has obviously been picking up this up recently, and I knew I wanted to pick up when everything, as I kind of said previously in the, previously in the video, that I'm wanting to educate myself more. So I requested this one on my library app for audiobook. Back probably end of May but obviously it's only just become available to me because everybody's been reserving it. I'm not that far through, I've literally just started chapter two. I really am enjoying it. I think Rennie Edda Lodge is very unapologetic about writing this book and she states at the beginning that this book has come from her writing this article about how she's no longer wanting to talk to white people about race. She decided to write this book because after she posted the article she got a lot of positive feedback from both people of colour and white people, people of colour saying like thank you for this, like this is really important. But then also white people were going like, oh don't not talk about it, oh keep, you know, we want to hear you, we want to see you. If you're from the UK I definitely recommend this one because Rennie Lodge is British and she talks predominantly about British racism and British black history, even though I didn't realise it was going to be as so focused on the history of, especially the first chapter. Obviously I can't speak for the rest of the book, but the first chapter is very heavily cemented in black history and racism within the UK or history or the history of racism in the UK. And a lot of the stuff I'm kind of ashamed to admit that I've never really known about. Obviously I've known that it's racism has been present in the UK for god knows how long, but I didn't know some of the specifics and she really does go into those. And it was very educational and very interesting to hear about. Now chapter two is kind of moving on into the system. And she's starting the chapter off talking about Stephen Lawrence, which is a very important and very well-known case of police brutality and or police murder in the UK. So I'm very interested to continue on to see what the book progresses to be. If you are from the UK or just in general, if you want to know about more black British history and just want to educate yourself on black history, then I definitely recommend picking this one up. But I would get there now. If you want it from your library, I'd get there now because it's probably like backed up for ages and reservations because it's been very popular at the moment. So that is it for this video. I think I had a good reading month this month. It wasn't like anything extremely better than last month, but I kind of read a little bit more. I've now decided to kind of hold myself accountable and going on from now, alongside all my other books that I'm reading, read kind of on my phone through my library, read loads of non-fiction books, whether that be about black people or LGBTQ plus or anything, just more like non-fiction because now I'm out of education, I still feel like I need to keep learning. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wrap this up here. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments any of the books that you read this month, June, that's the name of the month. We are now into July. If you're new around here, do not forget to subscribe, like the video, turn my notification bell on so you know when I'm gonna next gonna post. And with that all said and done, I hope you have a good day, afternoon, evening, night, and I'll see you all in my next video.